Hey, welcome back. Today, I want to talk about how I made the ground fog in one of my recent renderings. It's pretty simple to do, and it only takes a few minutes to set up, so let's get into it. So here's a simplified version of my scene file. I removed all the characters except for this guy, and I removed a bunch of the arms that were coming up out of the ground. And I'm going to hide the trees from view, and I'll also hide this fog. And I'll switch to material display. And this is the ground fog that I created for this project, but I'm going to delete it so I can show how to make it. Now the first thing I need to do is hit Shift A and add a cube. And I'll scale it out and move it so it covers the entire ground plane. Then I'll move it up so it's just below the ground. And then I'll switch to edit mode and grab the top. And I'll move it so it's just above this guy's head. Then I'll switch back to object mode. And with the cube selected, I'll hit control A and apply scale. Now I want to be able to see through the cube. So I'll select it and go to object properties. Then I'll scroll down to viewport display. And down here where it says display as, I want to change this to bounds. So now it's basically just a wireframe display of the cube. And now I'll jump over to the shading tab and with the cube selected, I'll create a new material by clicking the new button. And I'll name it ground fog 02, since the original ground fog is still in here. And I'll select the principled BSDF and delete it. Then I'll hit Shift A and add a volume scatter. And I'll plug it into the volume input on the material output node. And now I have fog, but it's just a big brick. So I need to add some more nodes to make this work. And the first one I'm going to add is a gradient texture node. So I'll hit Shift A and search for gradient. And there it is, so I'll place it right here and plug the color output into the density input. But it's not really doing much, so I'll add a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. Then on the texture coordinate node, I'll plug the object output into the vector input on the mapping node. And then I'll plug the mapping node into the gradient node. And that's going to shove all the fog over to one side. So on the mapping node, I'll change the Y rotation to 270. And now I have ground fog, but it's very uniform and flat. So I need to break it up. And to do that, I'll hit Shift A and add a noise texture node. And again, I'll add a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. But this time on the texture coordinate node, I'll plug the generated output into the vector input on the mapping node. And then I'll plug the mapping node into the noise texture. And now I need to mix the noise texture and the gradient texture. So I'll add a mix color node. And I'll drop it right here in front of the gradient node so the gradient plugs into slot A. And I'll plug the noise texture into slot B. But before I do that, I'm going to plug it directly into the surface input on the material output so I can see what it's doing. And you can see that the noise is stretched in the Z direction. So I'll change the mapping scale to 0.1. And I think that looks a lot better. But I need to make some more adjustments. So I'll add a color ramp. And I'll drop it in right here. And I'll drag the sliders until I start getting some really dark blacks and really bright whites. I'm also going to adjust the noise texture settings to 10 on the scale and 5 on the detail and 0.8 on the roughness. So now I'll plug the volume scatter back into the volume input on the material output node. 
And I'll plug the color ramp into slot B on the mix node. And you can see the fog is starting to break up a little bit, but it's still a big brick and it's not staying down at ground level. So on the mix node, I'll switch this to subtract. And if I drag the factor all the way down to zero, I have a solid mass of fog. But if I drag it all the way up to one, you see it's starting to break up. But I can still make it look a little better with a couple more nodes. So I'll add a math node and I'll drop it in right here. And then I'll hit Shift D to duplicate it and drag it over here. I'll leave this first one set to add and I'll change the other one to multiply. And I'll plug the subtract node into the add node. I'll plug the add node into the multiply node. And I'll plug the multiply node into the density input on the volume scatter. And now I can control how high the fog rises off the ground by adjusting these values. And for this project, I found that a setting of 0 0.01 on the add node and a setting of 5 on the multiply node works pretty good. And if I come back over to my color ramp, I can adjust the black and white sliders until I get something that I like. And I think that's looking pretty good right there. And if I hit F12 to render, Here's the result with some nice ground fog to make your renders a little more spooky. Okay, that's about it for this one. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post them below. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.